in these last days god is going to release awesome signs and wonders and awesome spiritual experiences that even the young from the old they all will see visions they'll all have supernatural experiences but in the midst of that the devil can also show you visions amen and let me give you a good example matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 8 you'll read that the devil carried the lord jesus up to a high mountain and he placed him there and then he showed him all the kingdoms of the world if you ever been to israel you go to the judean desert the judean desert was where the lord jesus was tempted i went there once and i stood at a mountain to see no matter how good i said you have you look around the whole area you'll only see desert you cannot see any kingdoms of the world so i used to wonder how in the world did the devil show the lord jesus kingdoms it is in vision the devil showed the lord a vision of all the kingdoms of the world before his eyes you know look at this word here kingdoms of the world if you stand in the judea and you look eastwards you can only see jordan only jordan you can see you cannot see any other kingdom but here it does not say kingdoms it says it doesn't say kingdom it says kingdoms so the devil showed the lord jesus a vision all the kingdoms of the world he says you have come to save them i'll give you you see in this vision in this scripture the devil showed a vision to the lord jesus so the devil can show visions take note of this number 2 now look at this the devil took him up yesterday i demonstrated to you carrying that uh, where's that boy the pastor is he gone there you are yesterday said so the devil carried him so what is that experience levitation have you heard of which big doctors levitating themselves you see the devil took him up which means the devil gave the lord jesus a spiritual experience right but it is not from god the experience was not from god the vision is not from god but the vision was real the experience was real but it is not from god because the lord jesus christ was grounded in the word of god at every temptation he told the devil it is written three times he used the word right it is written in the same manner you must be full of the word of god meditate the word of god day and night time will delay no longer The next thing we read about Anna. Yang mlingine ambao tunasoma kuhusu Anna. She was a prophetic intercessor. Alikuwa ni muombaji wa kinabii. You know there is a difference between an ordinary intercessor and a prophetic intercessor. Kuna tofauti kubwa sana kati ya muombaji wa kawaida na muombaji wa kinabii. 
a prophetic intercessor gets their prayer points from god mwombaji wa kinabii anapata prayer points kutoka kwa mungu they are supernaturally inspired by god to pray and intercede mara zote wanasukumwa na mungu kuomba in jeremiah chapter 27 yeremia 27 verse 18 mstari wa 18 The Lord asked a question. Mungu aliuliza swali. But if they are prophets. Lakini kama kuna manabii. And if the word of the Lord is with them. Na kama neno la Mungu liko juu yao. Let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts. Na waombe waombe Mungu wa Mungu wa majeshi. See the scripture says. Umeona neno la Mungu linavyosema? A prophet is an intercessor. Manabii lazima awe muombaji a prophetic intercessor muombaji wa kinabii so what is intercession nini maana ya uombaji huu wa kuomboleza the greek word for intercession gives us this meaning kwenye lugha ya kigiriki intercession inamaanisha hivi maombi ya kuomboleza someone who meets with god at a set appointed time mtu anayekutana na mungu kwenye muda maalum kabisa ambao umepangwa at a set appointed place mahali sahi, mahali fulani ambapo pamepangwa and with a purpose na kwa kusudi maalum why do they come to meet with god kwa nini wanakuja kukutana na mungu to mediate before god for someone kwa ajili ya kuomba au kumsemesha mungu kumbembeleza mungu kuhusu mtu fulani to stand in for another person kusimama kwa ajili ya mtu mwingine This is the meaning of an intercessor. Hii ndio maana ya muombaji wa kinabii. It's not just simply praying for this point or that point. Sio tu kwa ajili ya kuombea pointi hii na pointi ile. An intercessor stands in the shoe of the suffering person. Muombaji huyu wa kinabii anavaa viatu vya yule mtu anayepata shida. And they take the burdens upon their own self. Wanachukua ule mzigo juu yao wenyewe. For example, mfano If an intercessor is praying for Tanzania. Kama muombaji akiwa anaiombea nchi ya Tanzania Many people pray like this. Wengi huwa wanaomba hivi. Lord, this nation is evil. Mungu taifa hili ni ovu. Lord, there are so many adulterers. Katika kuna uzinzi mwingi kwenye nchi hii. Nation has sin. Nchi imezini. This is how they pray. Ndio wanavyoomba. But an intercessor doesn't pray like that. Muombaji wa kinabii haombi hivyo. The intercessor will bend their knees. Muombaji wa kinabii atapiga magoti. They will not even lift up their face to God. Wala hawainui macho yao kumtazama Mungu. They will beat on their chest. Watakuwa na kwenye kifua chao they will say na watasema lord we have sinned mungu tumekukosea lord our nation has sinned mungu taifa letu limekukosea intercessor takes the burden upon themselves muombaji huyu wa kinabii anabeba mzigo juu yao wenyewe as if they themselves have sinned na anapo sorry that is as if they themselves have sinned ni kama vile wao ndio waliotenda hiyo dhambi that is an intercessor huyo ndio ni muombaji that is the ministry of intercession hiyo ndio huduma ya maombolezo that is why there are not many intercessors today ndio maana siku hizi za hivi hakuna waombaji wa kinabii wengi most people who claim they are in the ministry of intercession they are just simply praying wengi leo ambao wanasema kwa kwenye hiyo huduma wanaomba tu kawaida God cannot find true intercessors. Mungu hawaoni hawa watu wa kuomboleza mbele zake. That is why Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 31 says. Ndio maana kwenye Ezekiel 22 mstari wa 31 anatuambia God is looking for one true intercessor. Mungu anatafuta muombolezaji mmoja tu. One true intercessor. Muombaji wa kweli mmoja tu. Who will stand in the gap between God and between the suffering At- sinful people. Atakayesimama katika ule uwezo uliopo kati ya Mungu na wale watenda dhambi. Can God find such intercessors in Tanzania? Mungu atawakuta waombaji wa namna hiyo Tanzania? Can God find such intercessors in Uganda? Mungu anaweza kukuta waombaji hao nchini Uganda? Can God find such intercessors in Ghana? Mungu atawakuta waombaji wa namna hiyo nchini Ghana? Today God's eyes is looking. Mungu macho yake sasa hivi anatazama. Looking for intercessors. Waombaji wa kinabii. Like Anna. Kama vile Anna. A good example of a true intercessor is Queen Esther. Mfano wa waombaji hawa wa kinabii ni Malkia Esther. In Esther Esther chapter 5. Esther sura ya 5. Verses 1 to 3. Mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa 3. You'll find how she interceded, she fasted and she prayed. Unaona namna alivyofunga na kuomba. Then she came and stood before the king. Na akasimama mbele ya mfalme to pray and petition for her people kuomba kuomba kupeleka hoja kwa ajili ya watu wake 
as a prophetic intercessor kama muumbaji wa kinabii ana listen to what god tells her and then prays as directed an i mean ana alimsikiliza mungu anachosema kisha akaomba kama mungu anavyomuelekeza that is a prophetic intercessor huyo ndio muumbaji wa kinabii let me give you one example ngoja atupe mfano mmoja genesis chapter 18 mwanzo 18 verses 19 to 32 msali wa 19 mpaka 22 when god shared with abraham about what is going to do to sodom and gomorrah kisha Ibrahim anachoenda kukifanya juu ya Sodoma na Gomora Abraham heard it Ibrahim akasikia and then he began to intercede akaanza kumbebeleza Mungu See, that's a true prophetic intercession hayo ndio maombi ya, ya kinabii they hear from god wanamsikia Mungu they get revelations from god wanapata taufunuo kutoka kwa Mungu and then they pray according to the revelation na wanaomba sawa sawa na ufunuo ule so what did Anna pray Anna aliomba nini what was her mission nini lilikuwa kusudi lake where before we ask that question kabla tujaulize hilo swali let's ask another question na tuulize swali lingine where was she during her ministry of intercession alikuwa anafanya kazi huduma hiyo kazi yake ya uombaji wapi she was in the temple alikuwa hekaluni and what is the temple hekalu inamaanisha nini a place where a body of believers gather together mahali ambapo mwili wa kristo unakutana a place where the church gathers together mahali ambapo kanisa linakutana so an intercessor is not just a general prayer warrior muombaji wa kinabii sio tu muombaji wa wapiganaji wa vita wa kawaida an intercessor takes on the burden of another person upon themselves na muombaji wa kinabii anachukua mzigo wa maombi juu yake now sometimes when you are praying on when you are a true intercessor kama wewe ni muombaji kweli wa kinabii wakati mwingine ukiwa naomba you will even be taken in the spirit to heaven wakati mwingine utachukuliwa kwenda mbinguni and you will listen to what god tells you na utamsikia mungu anachosema and then you pray accordingly na utaomba sawa sawa we read that about ezekiel tunasoma kuhusu ezekiel in ezekiel chapter 11 ezekiel 11 verses 1 to 13 Mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa 13 The prophet Ezekiel was taken in the spirit to the temple in Jerusalem Nabii Elia Nabii Ezekiel alichukuliwa kwenda kwenye hekalu pale Jerusalem And he sees the condition there Anaanza kuangalia hali hali iliyopo kwenye ile hekalu la pale Jerusalem And then he prays accordingly Na anaomba sana The Bible says Neno la Mungu linatuambia In Revelation chapter 11 Kwenye ufunuo 11 verse 19 Mstari wa 19 That there is a temple in heaven Kuna hekalu juu mbinguni In Revelation chapter 8 Ufunuo sura ya 8 verse 3 says Mstari wa 3 tunatuambia Their prayers are also going on in heaven Kuna maombi yanayoendelea mbinguni And it takes place there Na yanafanyika huko So it is very important to be in the spirit Ni muhimu sana kuwa rohoni So what was Anna praying Nini ambacho Anna alikuwa anakiombea What was Anna's call Wito wa Anna alikuwa ni nini She was given one assignment Alipewa jukumu moja Her job was to pray for the birthing of the Messiah Kazi yake ilikuwa ni kuit kuomba kwa ajili ya kuzaliwa kwa Kristo Yesu She also prayed and prepared the way for Gabriel to come with a message for Mary Na alikuwa naomba ili Gabriel alete ujumbe kwa bikira Mariamu You know this is one of the very important job of an intercessor Hii ndio kazi moja wapo ya kazi muhimu sana ya muombaji wa kinabii Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation tribe tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and springs of water Thank you.